If alcohol <coughs> has always been the work of the devil, even when Allah said, He didn't say it was haram yet, even then it was evil. Even then. Even when He said, at least don't be drunk when you what? When you pray. Even then it was still the work of who? The devil. But Allah didn't say it yet. It was too much to handle for some people. So Allah was merciful to the believers, even around the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And He allowed them to develop, to mature, and eventually gave them the final verdict, this is evil, this is an abomination, you need to stop altogether. What I'm trying to tell you is, nowadays you give da'wah to someone, and you expect them to turn around and turn into a sahabi, or if not sahabi, sahabi at least a tabi'i, within 24 hours. Bro, I told you it's haram yesterday. Why are you still doing it, bro? Astaghfirullah al-Azim. These people don't even change, man. I already gave them da'wah. They didn't change. I already told them. I gave a whole 20-minute khutbah. And look, nothing changed. Man, can you like go read something about Nuh alayhi salam or something, dude? He has a right to say people don't change. <laughs> you don't have a right to say that. And by the way, it is not your words or my words that change people. It is not our words that change people. It is Allah that changes people. The second way we do it, we make it seem like you have to have so much knowledge. You have to know so much fiqh and so much aqidah and so much Islamic history and so much Arabic and so much tafsir and so much of so many things and you have to know so many scholars and all of their books and all of their names and all this stuff and then you have to watch all these thousands of YouTube videos and take all these notes maybe then you might make it into Jannah <coughs> and now what happens to people they get intimidated man there's way too much stuff to learn bro I don't know I don't know this stuff but I'm not good enough until I learn everything let me ask you something think about this this is one of the most beautiful stories in the entire Quran. It is the young men of the cave. You know the story? These young men are living at a time where there are no prophets. These young men are, belong to a village, a city, where there are no other Muslims. They're the only ones. Everybody else is a mushrik. These young men are not scholars. They don't have a shaykh who teaches them. They have no ijazah in anything. Nothing. All they know is that they cannot worship anyone other than Allah. That's all they know. They don't have any other ilm. They don't know anything else. <coughs> and look, ulama of Islam, scholars of Islam, from the beginning of our history to this day, people who study tafsir for their entire life are going to be writing and studying the legacy of young men who didn't know anything but la ilaha illallah. Those young men who are nothing in knowledge are heroes to the ulama of Islam. The third way in which we close the door to Jannah on people, we make it sound like only the best people are going to go to Jannah. But you, unfortunately, I mean, you could try, but I mean, look at you. I mean, seriously, Jannah, you, I mean, come on. Let me tell you something from the Quran. La yaslaha illa al ashqa. Before I translate this ayah, listen to this example. It's a silly example, but it'll get the point across. The, you know, the, de the Department of Motor Vehicles, there are traffic laws. You guys are familiar with traffic laws unless you're 17 years old. But, you know, if you're familiar with traffic laws, listen. They say you will get a ticket if you speed. You'll get a ticket if you what? Speed. Does that mean you will only get a ticket if you speed? No, that means one of the ways you can get a ticket is what? Speeding, but there are other ways to get a ticket, right? But what if it said, no one will get a ticket except the one who speeds? If I say it like that, nobody will get a ticket except the one who speeds, then what are we saying? Everybody else is what? Off the hook, no problem. The only crime is what crime? Speeding. Now listen, Allah does not say, Yaslaha al ashqa. The worst, He will enter the worst people into hell. He will throw the worst people into hell. If He said that, 
then there's the, the room is open. The worst people will go to hell and not that bad people also. He didn't say that. He said, La yaslaha illa al ashqa. Nobody will go to hell except the worst, worst, worst kinds of people. Al ashqa. The most wretched, the most miserable, the most evil kinds of people. Those are the ones that are going to go to Jahannam. What is the concept that most Muslims have in their head? That somehow most of us are going to end up in Jahannam. Ya Rabb, look at the next ayah. Look at the next ayah. وَسَيُجَنَّبُهَا atqa. He didn't say, he will not let anybody go to Jannah except the best people, the most righteous people. He didn't say that. He said, he will let the most righteous people go to Jannah. They will be saved from Jahannam. But he didn't say only they will be saved. He left the door. When he came to Jahannam, he closed the door. When he came to Jannah, in the very next ayah, he opened the door. He likes to open that door, we like to close it. And not on ourselves, especially on other people. The last thing I want to share with you in this regard, about making our deen easy, taking our deen easily. Is Allah angry in the Quran sometimes? Tell me. Is He angry in the Quran sometimes? Absolutely. Now please listen. Listen to the silly example first, then I'll tell you about the, the Quran. Sometimes, I have six children, by the way. So one of my younger boys, Walid, maybe he does something. Maybe he took the crayons and decided to write his name on the wall. And I'm yelling at him, Walid, why did you do that? Why did you take the crayons? You shouldn't have written on the wall. I'm yelling at him. And my daughter says, yeah, Walid, why'd you do that? And I look at my girl and go, excuse me? When did you become mama bear? I'm the father, I have a right to be angry. You're a little chicken, you need to know your place. You understand what I'm saying to you? Allah gets angry in the Quran because He is Allah. He has a right to get angry angry. But you know what people do? They take the ayat in which Allah is angry and they say, yeah, Allah is angry. So I'm angry too. The biggest example of that is our own messenger sallallahu alayhi wa how he taught us this balance. We're in Christmas season, so it's appropriate to mention even. When somebody says Allah has taken a son, how angry does it make Allah? How angry does it make Allah? The skies shake, they're about to rip open. Takadu samawatu. The earth is about to crack open. The skies are about to rip when somebody says what? Allah has taken a son. This is extremely angering to Allah. Extremely infuriating to Allah. But those same Christians who say it, when they come to visit the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He tells them to stay where? In which hotel? Huh? Al-Masjid al-Nabawi. And when they pray to Jesus, where do they pray? In Al-Masjid Al-Nabawi, by the permission and hospitality of the Messenger of Allah. Because Allah has the right to get angry, but the Messenger's job is loving da'wah. There's a difference between the two, and the Muslim needs to understand that difference. They cannot take the anger of Allah and turn that to your anger against people. You have no right. You have no right, and I have no right. That is in the hands of Allah.